backpedaling after the president's unscripted comment on a Russian regime change. President Biden will try and shift the conversation, though, to his domestic agenda today, because in the next hour, he's rolling out his budget wish list, and it comes at a critical time. The clock is ticking before the midterm elections and a potential change in the balance of Congress. Let's talk about this some more and what Democrats are hoping to get across the finish line here. ABC <clears throat> political director Avery Harper joining me now. Let's take a look at what's in the budget, Avery. It includes that billionaire tax that would be a minimum tax on households worth more than $100 million. Uh, it aims to significantly bring down the deficit and it includes the funding increases for law enforcement, climate initiatives, also the military. So what stands out to you and what do you think we could actually see Congress move on? Right. Well, the first thing that really stands out to me is this uh, new focus on deficit reduction. And that's really an aim to get Senator Joe Manchin on board. Uh, you have to remember that uh, the Biden administration was not able to get that build, build back better agenda uh, over the finish line because it could not get the support of Joe Manchin. And you, as you mentioned, uh, time is ticking. Uh, we are heading toward that midterm election and we know that things might not end super favorably for Democrats. So it is important for them to get uh, some wins where they can before that election. Uh, some of the issues that I think that are going to be uh, taken up by Congress, if you look at uh, that uh, budget, they are looking for $30 million billion to tamp down on crime. And I think there's going to be some bipartisan support for that. Also, uh, $800 billion per year for military. Uh, given the conflict in Ukraine, I think that there's going to be some bipartisan uh, support for that. Uh, so some, those are some of the issues that I think we're going to see uh, Congress take up and move on. So former President Trump uh, also in the news today, as you know, that federal judge uh, finding that he likely committed felony obstruction in his effort to overturn the 2020 election. U.S. District Judge uh, David Carter also ruled Trump's former lawyer must turn over documents to the January 6th committee. So how significant is this, you think? Uh, pretty significant. I, I think when you look at uh, what the judge ruled, uh, he really talked about the fact that uh, John Eastman was not going to be able to withhold a lot of those documents. He was claiming privilege uh, for those documents. And if you, you look at that ruling, uh, the judge says that the memo included a plan uh, that pushed uh, a, a knowingly uh, violation, a knowing violation of the Electoral Count Act. Uh, and, and that's going to be really important as the congressional investigation investigators as that January 6th committee tries to put together its findings to give folks a very clear picture of what happened in the lead up to January 6th and on that day. And it could impact how the Justice Department uh, plans to utilize that information uh, down the line. So it's definitely something that we're watching. All right, the January 6th committee also debating whether to ask Ginny Thomas, uh, the wife of Justice Clarence Thomas, for an interview. This happened just after last week and the release of those text messages where she's urging the election be overturned. And she's talking with Chief of Staff to the White House, Mark Meadows. What would the committee want to find out from her? And what's been the fallout from these text messages since we reported on it last week? Right. Well, Ginny Thomas is a known conservative uh, activist. She's someone who has had her uh, feelings about the 2020 uh, election uh, on the record. Uh, it was interesting to see those text messages back and forth uh, with the uh, chief of staff, then chief of staff to uh, former President Donald Trump, just to see how close she was to Trump's inner circle. Uh, and she's going to be one of many people that the January 6th committee could uh, try and talk to as, again, they try to get a full picture of what happened that day. Uh, could her uh, text messages be the most important uh, of the text messages that Mark Meadows handed over to investigators? Probably not. Uh, but it could be that she is someone that they talk to uh, to get more information about what's going on. Uh, the fallout, I think, is going to be for her husband, for Justice Clarence Thomas. Uh, just yesterday, we saw on this week, Senator Amy Klobuchar call for uh, Justice Thomas to recuse himself from certain Supreme Court cases. Uh, especially those pertaining to the election, just because the fact that uh, Jenny Thomas has the Supreme Court justice's ear. Uh, we have not uh, seen any indication that he could do that, but uh, we could see more political pressure for uh, the other justices to speak out on this and the other justices to push for Thomas to recuse himself from these election-related cases. Avery Harper, thanks for weighing through all the uh, details with me. Appreciate it.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.